Yara, a story about a superhero who lived way back in the age of Vikings. And wait, is this the sword from Skyrim? Where's Hal, everybody, and welcome to, to another video, and welcome to, to another review video, my dear, dear friends. Well, people have requested that I review this comic book, however, I don't buy comic books that I do not consider to be worth buying, just from the pitch or from, I, from what I see on the internet. However, somebody, I don't know who, posted this on the internet and I have accidentally stumbled upon this and I said to myself, oh, I will check it out whether it is worth it or not for me to actually afterwards buy it myself. Um, I'm sorry, not my cup of tea. Now, the way this has all been set up is that uh, this is the best thing since sliced bread, people have said. That this was supposed to be saving the American comic book industry, along with the flagship title I saw, that apparently, you know, of course, coming from the mind of Eric July, plus, uh, what are their names, the um, Jen and Sylvia Soska, and uh, the artist Deborah Carita, and that apparently that which is missing from the American comic book industry, which is the good old classic superhero stories in which we would be able to read about aspirational characters such as Superman, Wonder Woman, the Batman, Spider-Man, and so on and so forth, the X-Men, uh, that uh, have been or were <laughs> able to grasp the attention of readers, not only in the United States of America, but all over the world. I'm from Europe, and I love American comic books. Now, my cup of tea is somewhere a little bit different, but I do enjoy a good Batman comic book. I do enjoy a good X-Men comic book. Although I prefer more independent uh, now, like mainstream slash independent, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Hellboy, Lobo, or uh, British comics like 2080. But now we are going somewhere which we where we don't want to go we want to review the comic now and um so i've reviewed isom 1 isom 2 and alpha core and it missed what it was supposed to do which is to do precisely that which the american comic books were doing in the past wholesome stories about aspirational characters superheroes that are introducing the characters of course in issue 1 uh, setting up who they are, what their powers are, who they're fighting, and what they stand for. Which, everything that has been mentioned was missing in the Isom comic books. Yara was supposed to be another iteration of uh, some of these characters from Eric July's, uh, like, Eric verse. <laughs> Rip others, I'm sorry. And, uh, nah, I mean, after having read this, it's missing out on everything, once again, that uh, like classic um, American comic books should be about. There is no superhero in this comic book. Now, let me explain. This comic book is about a bunch of vile people. I mean, there's Yara, which is the protagonist there. She's absolutely not a superhero. The story is, by the way, divided into two parts. So the first part is... Like this kind of an introduction that I think we saw in the trailer, the live action trailer, um, where of course, is this is this shot in every single Eric July comic book? Like Isom falling on a a car. Uh, so her fighting with Isom and Alpha Core arriving, uh, fighting her. Uh, yeah, so they just they they find her. By the way, Alpha Core, as I mentioned in the my review for Alpha Core is a rip-off of uh, Justice League of America, except they are not superheroes, they are a bunch of cunts. They are, abs they are, they are acting like a like bunch of nitwits, being all, being all whiny, complaining all, all the time, fighting all the time, 
it doesn't seem to me as if they were standing for truth, justice, and the American way. Uh, so they fight. This is, you know, like a Wonder Woman ripoff. Quite obviously a Superman ripoff. It's all right. People, you know, take inspiration from different things. It's okay to be inspired. It's okay to be influenced. Fine. However, uh, so they, uh, t she takes them to space and the Superman character, nor this Wonder Woman character, are able to survive in space, so they kind of lose. And uh, now there we are getting into the part where the writing is starting to be a little bit, um, uh, all right, the writing isn't good. So this is a news report. Uh, that is reporting upon the matter that happened, the incident. Uh, just by the way, look at those buildings behind the the news person. There are lots of windows. I mean, the building on the left. Are there really so many, so many teensy tiny windows? How tiny are the floors? I mean, just compare the two buildings uh, that are standing next to each other. The building in the uh, at, at the center is quite obviously. Uh, further away, yet the windows are bigger and further apart from each other. So that means that the building on the left is closer to us and the windows are so tiny and so close to each other that I think that there are Oompa Loompas living in that skyscraper. But uh, all right, all right, let's just move past that. Um, so the newscaster says Yara has powers that allow her to fly, ma manipulate the element of ice, although it's not clear how. She has super strength, all right, so, so she's reporting in, in a way. And that cut. And suddenly, for some strange reason, in this official newscast, the superhero character, the Superman character, appears and says, Okay, that's enough. This isn't a TV spot for Yara. I could fend of the likes of Yara on my own easily. I have before, and I will again, but n I'm not alone anymore now, am I? Yara, this is a losing battle. So it's basically a bunch of uh, like people with like superhuman strength, super people, fighting each other, not really caring about the civilians. Just, you know, dealing with their own fights, like beating the hell out of each other, hating on each other, competing. They, they, these are not superheroes. These are bastards. By the way, once again, those two buildings. Can you see? Uh, Oompa Loompas? Right. So and <laughs> this is what we know from the trailer. I mean, <laughs> the the writing here. Um, okay. Uh, I will get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The The... the <laughs> they get to a lab, and they are apparently so working on something to prolong uh, longevity and human life and overall, you know, like health and so on and so forth. And this dialogue, I mean, welcome to the future, Dr. Rodell. Projexus is at the cutting edge of technology, and I feel with your understanding expertise, we can step into the future by understanding our past. Hey, have you met Dr. Sally Rodell yet? Don't be shy. Come say hi. An archaeologist. That's a bit archaic, isn't it? So that was supposed to be a joke. Because um, archaeology and archaic are quite obviously uh, words that are familiar. They have got the same root. They have got the same word root. Uh, and that's it. They, they they both refer to something which was in the past. Of course, archaic is something um, which, you know, is not in use anymore, that is obsolete, that uh, has been, you know, like hasn't been in use, any, in use anymore for a considerable length of time. An archaeologist is quite obviously a person who studies and searches for, uh, you know, things from the past, objects. But, oh, oh, you know, like, <laughs> in this case, this comparison, this sentence, this bubble really doesn't make any sense at all. She's, well, studied, Jerry, but if you want to question her credentials, be my guest. I'm going to ask you, does that make any sense to you? 
And it's filled with dialogue like that. I will not show you all of it. I don't want to get a copyright strike. But I will move to a, to a second part, or the second part of the story, which is worth mentioning uh, right now. So the second part of the story, I have to admit, is a bit more interesting than the first one, because we are dealing with extraterrestrials. We are dealing with uh, the people from Yara's home planet, I suppose, and we get to know that she's actually a fugitive, or we think at this point that she's a fugitive. We might get to know something else. I don't want to spoil much. Uh, so they are hunting for her, you know, her own people, and it's very lengthy. It's It's very wordy. Uh, the the quality of the dialogue is like basically the same over and over again. Uh, so they they fight, and then of course you know another meta human is being formed in this in the form of this um, lady with this very strange haircut. Don't they call it? Um, how do they call it? The, the those critics who are criticizing mainstream Marvel comic book uh, lesbian haircut? Do they call it like this? I don't know. Maybe. But also, and you know, it's just all the same, all the same. There, and it's, this is something that I wanted to point out, by the way. So Alpha Core is seeing all this. Alpha Core is seeing uh, Yara like smashing the hell out of those other aliens, and those aliens smashing the hell of Yara, just fighting in the streets of a big city, right? And the, this is Alpha Core. There you are. That's Yara, but who's with her? There's three, there's three with her energy signature output detected here, and one other unknown. Once again, the dialogue is very, very clumsily written. No, there were four, the other one got away. Their power levels are unprecedented. Do we engage? Nah! <laughs> no! Not with them! Not with them! I won't know! I have a feeling if we get that the one that escaped, we won't have to chase after Yara. She'll come right to us. Firstly, it, it, it is a retarded thinking. And secondly, aren't you fucking superheroes? Shouldn't you be like, I don't know, saving the innocent citizens of Texas that are being endangered by this ferocious fight of aliens? <laughs> And this is the Justice League, I mean, basically. Do we, <laughs> do we engage? Nah. <laughs> um, I think I should say something about the art at this point. It has come to my attention that there are many people working on the art of this comic book. And that the initial artist apparently had somebody who helped her and cleared the artwork after her. The art is quite, like, obviously much better than in Isom 1 and 2. However, if you look, for example, at this headband, it should go around her forehead, and it really doesn't. It really, f it's it's way above her head, right? So it's like a little tiara on her head, not a, around her forehead. But that's, that's, that's nitpicking, that's nitpicking, of course. We are talking about the story here, and the you know, I'm neither am I really going to talk about the uh, the anatomy. I mean, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of Rob Liefeld, so I I can't really can't criticize anatomy. <laughs> right, right, right. But this is yeah. So they 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 fight and stuff. But this is this is something delicious. Yeah. So she uh, then she goes like to an old uh, like Mexican lady, uh, blah blah blah. This means nothing. It's a filler. I wanted to get to and uh, to Yara's origin because we also get to know about Yara's origin. I'll just flip through this. I don't want to show any uh, everything because copyright strike. Yara yada. It's very long and very boring. Very long, very long and boring comic book. I mean, ah, oh. I don't mind long comic books, but they, but they have to be good. I mean, this isn't like. It's horrible, per se. It's just so boring. And the dialogue is so clumsily written. Ugh. And it just drags on and on and on and on and on. And on! Jesus, where is it? 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 Look at that. Look at that. And there we go. All right. 
This is what I'm sure. So this is like um, Yara in the past. She landed on the Earth or something, and uh, so she landed in the in the Viking Age or on Iceland, I think, and uh, she became a Viking. Mm. You, you know that Viking isn't like every old Norse person. Do you know that Viking is actually like a name for quote unquote profession? Quote unquote profession. Like there's a certain activity connected with, with, with the word Viking. There's not all not all Norse people were Vikings. And also Um the, Um did old Norse people and Icelandic people look like this? Did they dress this is like taking... I mean, Eric July has read Thor from Marvel Comics. This is like Norse mythology from Marvel Comics' is Thor. But he, he, he puts it, he and Soska sisters, they put it into real world history. See? Old Norse. And they have, uh, the, they, they have the sword from Skyrim. <laughs> from Skyrim <laughs> No, hey listen. I love this comic book. Do you know why? I love it. Because it made me laugh so much. I haven't laughed reading a comic book like this in a long long time. Hey, thanks Eric. Thanks so click that fucking sword from Skyrim. <laughs> all right, all right. Woo. Woo. Right, so, um... <laughs> no, no, I do not recommend this comic book. Quite no, no, I mean, um, do you want to read um, a good, good comic book about uh, Norse mythology slash superheroes? Read Justice League uh, The Endless Winter by Ron Mars and Andrew Lanning, I think. It's much better. Uh, and and it's new relatively, so you will enjoy it much more than this. Don't don't spend your time on this bullshit, <laughs> please. And let me know in the comments down below what you think. They'll be all. Thank you very much for watching, and Namaria.